with that in mind, let's look at some of these covenants and let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse number 17. The Bible says, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. So he's talking to Noah, and he's saying, I'm going to make a covenant with you. Right? He's going to enter into a promise or an agreement with Noah, and that covenant is that he's going to be spared from the wrath to come. And um, flip back to Genesis chapter 9. And before we even dig into the chapter anymore, there's just one more point I wanted to make, is when it comes to the flood, the reason why God brought the flood, the Bible says, is because of all the wickedness. The wickedness was so great on the earth. Now, we don't know how much God revealed unto people in the days of, you know, uh, Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, you know, God had verbal, like, like people were able to communicate with God differently during early, early, early history before there was this written record. Now, it's not going to contradict or be any different than what we have today. God's word is ultimately eternal, but God has revealed more of his word over time, right, throughout history that, that he's given more and more information as things progress. Now, in order for people to be committing wickedness and doing evil and doing so much bad and wrong, they had to have known right from wrong that was given to them by God, yeah. right? So they didn't have the law of Moses written down and written in tablets and, and written in a book. But they knew what was right and wrong because God told them what was right and wrong. And God was able to give them law. So the, we don't have a full understanding, well, how much did God tell them? What all did they have to do? We don't know. Okay. But whatever, however much he, he had given them coincided with what we're seeing also being revealed later in the Old Testament, you know, with the laws and stuff, enough to know right from wrong. Okay, we know that God's not going to leave them not understanding. He's not going to hold people responsible and guilty if they've never even been told, well, hey, that's wicked. Yeah. How, could you, how could you wipe out the earth of wickedness if you don't even know what wickedness is, right? So obviously some of those things, I think they're just obvious. That should go without saying. But it is important when understanding these old covenants that... Even though they may have been written down at a certain time, doesn't mean they didn't already exist. Okay, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a starting point with Moses when it comes to many of the laws. And that's going to be important to remember because when we look at the New Testament, and yes, there were some changes, some things still don't change. So they weren't. They were, they were around before Moses, and they're around after Jesus Christ as well. As far as right, wrong, morality, right? What's wickedness? What's transgression? What's sin? These things all exist. So um, let's look at this covenant with Noah. This was very specific to Noah, and this isn't some huge doctrine, but, it, but we're going to see God's establishing a covenant with him. So what does he say here in Verse number eight, the Bible says, And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. So God's promise is that he will never destroy the earth again with a flood. That's the covenant he makes with Noah, and that's a promise. And it's not just with Noah. He says, with your seed after you and with every living creature and with the see wiped out the whole earth. So he's saying, I'm going to make this covenant now. I did it once. I flooded the earth, but I'm never going to do this again. 
and he gives a sign of the promise, just like with circumcision with Abraham. He gives that as the token, as the sign of the promise he made unto Abraham. Here it says in verse number 12, And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And very clearly, this is talking about the rainbow. And as what he says, And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And I, this was probably really important in the years right after the flood <laughs> for people to be able to look and be like, oh man, we heard the story of the flood, even you know, just for generations, like God wiped out everything. And then you see the rain clouds coming in and there's this huge storm and it's all black and you're going like, uh-oh. But God made a promise and says, no, you know, I, I you know, because there's always going to be storms, right? We have, we have storms, we have real bad storms, storms that could come in and last, you know, weeks even. And, and it could seem like, man, if it just keeps raining, you know, we're going we're gonna to be flooded. And floods happen, right? Local floods. So he gave this token and made the promise and said, it will never happen again. And it hasn't. And it's been how many thousands of years later, right? And, and it hasn't happened since then. And he says that he gave the rainbow. And, and this is what's interesting, though, as kind of a, a side note, is that this token of the covenant that God makes is the rainbow. I mean, the, the rainbow is from God. And it is a very good, positive symbol, sign, token of a covenant of God not destroying the earth with water ever again. And it's almost ironic how the Sodomites and the people that hate God have tried to take the rainbow as their right. symbol. Yep. And what they fail to realize is that, yes, while God promised not to destroy the earth, you know, they, maybe they try to have hope in the fact that, hey, God's not going to flood the earth again. Great. So we could just be extremely wicked, right? Because why did God destroy the earth? Because of the wickedness of the people. That was so great. You probably had a bunch of reprobates going around and, and committing wicked acts, which got God so angry that he thought that the only solution was just to wipe them out. Right? I mean, that's what we saw that he did with, with Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't go, he didn't send, like he sent Jonah in to Nineveh to preach to the city. He didn't send, uh, you know, his angels in to preach to the city. He sent them just to get Lot out of the city because he was going to destroy it. He sent, uh, or he called Noah into the ark to get Noah out of the danger because he's wiping out the whole world. So they think, I don't know what, they're probably not thinking this, but the irony would be like, Oh, yeah, well, God's not going to, you know, great, we're going to take the rainbow and we're going to put that in God's face so you're not going to destroy the world again and we can do whatever wickedness we want. Yeah, except it's just by water. Because you forgot about the fire. <laughs> Jesus is going to come back and judge and judge the earth by fire next time. Water was the first destruction. Fire is the second destruction. And he will come back and, and rain fire and brimstone down upon the earth, along with all the other plagues we see in the book of Revelation. So don't get too excited about your rainbow. The homos that want to use that. One, that's a token of a covenant God made with Noah and, and all mankind. But that's the God that you hate making that promise. Don't, don't think that that rainbow is going to protect you from the fire to come.